What's going on, everybody? My name is Derek, and this is Fatal RPM. So while I'm still waiting on some of the stuff to get straightened out with the Z before we start modding it, I do have one thing left at the current moment, or rather two things left at the current moment for the 335. And those two things are, one, I got the Vargas hose kit. Now that's a full silicone hose kit with, I think it's billet aluminum uh, machined end pieces. So everything that would have a plastic piece on OEM is billet aluminum on this one. Uh, now those ones are, they run kind of a pretty pity. I do have the red ones and personally I think they look really nice. Um, the good thing is that they are silicone so they are resistant to a lot more things than the rubber are. So hopefully they don't break down nearly as quickly. And then the second thing is for the longest time, I have no idea why BMW never called a recall on this because they always fell in the same place. The water pump. This is my third water pump that I'm replacing. They have always failed in the same place. It's right in between the inlet and outlet at the little uh, crease. There's like a little V-shape. And I've always looked for an upgraded hose, or not upgraded hose, but an upgraded water pump. And I think I finally found one. So this guy here is from O'Reilly's. It is the only aluminum housing or full aluminum water pump for the BMW. This part number here is this guy right here. It's CP6681. And as far as from what I could find, it seems okay. It only has one review on O'Reilly's website, and that's because somebody got a plastic one instead of an aluminum one, which I don't know how that could have happened, uh, seeing as how this is the only one I saw that they even sold. So there you go. Uh, it runs just shy of 400 bucks, so with taxes, you'll be... And 400 bucks but the good thing is it is an upgraded one and similar to fcp euro where i got my other two they do have a limited lifetime warranty in the same vein as like i said fcp euro so what that means is if this for any reason happens to fail i do not have to spend more money on a water pump i just have to take well technically i do have to spend one because i have to give them the water pump to return so i have to buy one and take it back but it will be refunded similar to fcp euro the only difference is that these are stocked in stores fcp euro is an online store so it's a lot quicker process and i don't have to pay for shipping which is amazing so what came with this is just some new hardware but as far as from what i could see this one does fit now don't get this uh mixed up with other ones you may see online for instance if you search that uh, part number you may get n52 stuff and the way you can tell is that this little connector here will be on the back side and there's little rubber insulators on two of the mounts so if you see that that's the wrong one do not buy that because probably won't work i honestly don't know if it will work or not but i'm not willing to find out i'm not in <laughs> i'm not in the business of wasting my own time so let's go ahead get this car jacked up we'll start the install and everything i've already drained the coolant mostly so uh yeah let's let's get to it All right, so once you get your wheel off, next thing you're gonna to wanna to be taking off, it's a little plate that goes over this part of our steering right here. Just this guy. Let's hold on with two 10 mil bolts. One's right there at this hole, the little silver piece, that hole, and the other one's right there. Watch you pull those guys off. Then you should be good to start getting access to some of these coolant lines. So, after you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go under here, take off your belly pan if you haven't already, and then after you have that off, as I've showed previously, to drain coolant, you have a drain plug on manual cars, but on automatic cars, you're gonna to wanna to have your bucket ready. And we're gonna come over here to this silver guy, 
gonna pull this little clip, pull this out, and it will drain the majority of our coolant. Like I said, manual cars, they have one. I think it's on passenger side. No, actually it is on the manual or on the uh, driver's side. It's just a little drain plug, which you can loosen it up and drain your radiator. But once we get that done, then we can start pulling all these lines off. And the ones that come in the kit are these guys here. So we have the upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose. You have your little Mickey Mouse guy, which goes down from the thermostat up into the cylinder head. And then you have the vent hose, or I forget which one this is, but this crosses over to the overflow from this guy. And yeah, other than that, you have this guy here as well, which is the crossover between the water pump itself and the thermostat. So those are all the lines we're gonna be replacing along with the water pump. So let's go ahead and drain the rest of this coolant and we'll start getting the stuff in here. Should be a relatively quick video, shouldn't be too long. Side note, red stuff is simply lube. Didn't want to tear that O-ring, did it before, wasn't a fun thing. All right, so I removed almost every hose except for one. Now, you'll have to do a little bit of extra work to get the lower radiator hose out, and here's why. So, right here is where the lower radiator hose goes in, and right here is usually your fan trowel, which I have sitting right over there. So, what you're gonna have to do is go ahead and take that out, on the automatics, there's a bolt here, and then the bolt that holds this guy in, you can see the hole right there on the lower side, so you're gonna be coming up from the bottom. Comes out right there, and then that guy will slide out. As soon as you go ahead and unplug this, which is kinda of hard, if you have a screwdriver, you can press the one side in on here, and then press the other side with your finger, and pull it straight out. Now, the only other one that I won't be recording is the crossover between the thermostat and the water pump, and that's because there's zero room for me to be able to film down there, which is part of the reason why I never filmed how to do the water pump in the first place, because I'd have to take a whole bunch of stuff apart. But long story short, to make my life easier, got the engine support bar out. I went ahead and lowered my subframe about an inch or so, which gives me better access to the water pump bolts. Now there's a couple, I think they're E, I think they're E12s or E8s, one of the two. But there's a couple of those, you take those guys out after removing the thermostat, and then your water pump's out. But as far as the lower radiator support, or lower radiator support, lower radiator hose goes, 
go ahead pull it out of here and to make your life so much easier take every other hose off of the thermostat do not fight with that lower radiator hose and the reason why I say that is because there's as little room as you have here to get this guy out you have half that amount of space under so go ahead remove that one first and then you're able to remove the thermostat it's just two 10 mil bolts after you remove the thermostat you can pull that whole radiator hose out from under and I'll show you like that or I'll show you that here in one second All right, so quite a bit later and we finally have everything installed. As you can see here, all the lines are going up. We got a little Mickey Mouse tube going all the way back down to the thermostat, lower radiator hose as well. And it's not the easiest thing to show, but I'm gonna try and show you anyway. The new water pump installed as well. With the mic, I cannot fit the uh, camera up in here. So we got it installed, it's all bolted down, it comes with new hardware, which is awesome. Uh, we got the thermostat, as you can see, the lower radiator hose going in right there. That's from the uh, overflow, and goes back over here. We just need to get this guy bolted back up to the radiator, and then get that plugged back into his home. But as soon as we get that all done, we'll be ready to test everything out, make sure everything's not leaking. Man, my fingers are crossed I don't have a leak because I don't want to have to pull any of this stuff back apart. So I got the first gallon in and that fitting's leaking. The new Vargas one. That's honestly kind of upsetting. Cause it's on the thermostat, so I'm gonna have to pull the thermostat out, make sure that it's not cracked. If it's if that's not cracked, then it definitely is the fitting, so kind of upsetting. We'll get back to you though. All right, so it's really windy out there, so I went ahead and hopped in the car. Everything seemed to be good. Uh, I just removed the hose and spun the O-ring around in there. It's not nearly as tight fitting as it is OEM, so I feel like that might have been the issue. It just wasn't seating correctly. It wasn't broken or anything, so that was good. So I didn't have to take the thermostat out, so that saved me a couple of hours of my life. But other than that, now we are bleeding the system and that's super easy to do. All you gotta do is turn the car into the on, uh, on position and make sure your heat's turned all the way up. Go ahead and turn the fan down. Make sure you have something charging the battery. I got my little battery charger right there. And then press and hold the gas pedal down for about 10 to 15 seconds. And you can hop out the car after that. Go ahead, listen under the car, make sure you hear your water pump turning on. If you're turning on this bleeding system, it's about a 10 minute process. So that's the main reason why you want to have something charging the battery. Because if you don't, your battery's probably going to be dead unless you have like a brand new battery uh, that's just been installed. So I'm going to go ahead and bleed the system. Nothing looks like it's leaking right now, which is good. After that's done, then I'll get back to you. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're just gonna be waiting on this, but while we're actually doing that 
the one thing I want to talk about is the process of which I'm going to do the videos for the Z. So soon here, I want to start getting done with some of the body work. There's a couple dents and stuff that I want to try and hammer out. Uh, but the main thing I want to worry about is that paint because I'm going to wrap the Z and I'm not sure if the scratches and stuff that are in there because there's some really deep scratches are going to come through on the wrap i've heard that you still want to do your body work if you have like bad body work on your car before you do a wrap because it will come through so we're going to go ahead get that uh, car clay barred then we're going to start getting to work on the paint sanding it down using bondo wherever we need to or rather i'm going to use a glazing putty so that i don't have to deal with uh, bondo uh, sanding it wise uh, it's a lot less sanding with glazing putty because it's a much lower build however once we get that done then I want to start working on some of the other stuff getting tires for the wheels getting those put on the car and start doing I, do, I want to hold off on start doing some of the performance stuff because once I start doing that I one have to still wait for some other parts to come in because I'm not going to be able to put the turbo on without a manifold so I'm waiting on that uh, and once that comes in, then we'll be able to start really getting to work. But I do want to maybe hold off on that for a little bit until I can get a garage uh, as far as performance parts of that goes. So we will be getting a lot of other stuff done to the Z, mostly cosmetic. We will be getting to the performance stuff, though. Some of the uh, nuance thing or not nuance things, some of the little things that I can still upgrade on the Z, like uh, fuel system and stuff without it really affecting the car I will do however like I said I want to hold off on some of the other stuff but other than that I'll get right back to you as soon as we're done bleeding the system to make sure nothing's leaking fingers are crossed all right so after first startup everything seems to be looking fine no drips great. which means that fitting is holding tight Let's just hope that over time it doesn't decide it wants to start leaking again. Hopefully, once that thing is sealed, it stays sealed. So, yeah, we just need to get the tire back on. Get the tire back on, take it around the block. It's coming up to temp right now. Uh, we can see our oil temp has not really moved yet at all, but we're getting there. So let's get the tire on, get the car dropped, and we're all done. So. That's pretty much going to be the end of the video here. As always, I want to thank everybody for watching. If this video helped you out in any way, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, if you just like the video, go ahead and hit the like button as well. Other than that, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see any more videos coming from the 300ZX over there, or you want to see any more videos with the 335 or any future projects. Other than that, as always, thank you again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. i